Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today, listening to this webinar on tools of the trade. And I chose this topic because I often hear or I'm often asked about different things that people can do at home to help their dogs. For, it could be for a variety of reasons. Certainly one of the most common is pain reduction or to make their dog feel more comfortable. And they're, fortunately, we live in a day and age where there's so many opportunities out there to help our dogs or our other animals to feel better. And with all of these products out there, I think sometimes it gets confusing. Um, there's definitely more and more out there, as I indicated. And before I really begin, I just want to state that all of the items I'm talking about, there in no way am I taking money or um, have any financial interest in any of these companies. I'll share with you things that have worked best in my clinic and with my patients and my own dogs. Um, sometimes as we'll go through this webinar, there are, there is a lot of research supporting some of the tools and on some of the other tools, there's not a lot of research and really it's coming from clinical experience. I own a very busy rehabilitation clinic and, um, have so for almost 20 years. So I've seen many things come and go. I also teach throughout the United States and throughout the world on both rehab and physical conditioning. So I've also seen a lot of things from that perspective. All of the tools I'm gonna to talk about today are something that you, the owner, are, have at your disposal. So these are, for the most part, not professional items. However, many of them are used in professional clinics. So as I go ahead, I'll give you some experience and we may find that some of these tools don't have randomized controlled studies. Um, many of them are, we're seeing clinical results and unlike humans, most of our animals, uh, we do not see a placebo effect. So they do not know that the laser or uh, PEMF bed is going to help them. They just give the pure, honest results. So and I will we'll share that with you as we go along. When we look at our different tools, we're really looking at them. Certainly probably the number one is to reduce pain. Everyone wants our animals to be more comfortable. So pain reduction is definitely one of the key things. Reduction of in inflammation, whether it be from a sports injury, a surgery, anything like that. Wound healing, whether it be a surgical wound or a lick granuloma or a hot spot, lots of tools assist with wound healing. We may also want to prepare our animals for exercise or activity, you know, definitely helping with warming them up and cooling them down, improving circulation, and then also promote healing. Again, whether it's recovering from a soft tissue injury or um, a surgery or just from osteoarthritis. So we want to look at what tools we can use. As I had indicated, there are many tools available. So we can look at what is out there. I always advise owners to spend and choose wisely. You know, we could just while researching to do this webinar, I was pulling up a ton of different tools. Um, and, you know, some of them I'd never heard of, some of them I did, and I was trying to find more information on it. And it kind of takes you down different wormholes um, with all that sort of stuff. So definitely do your research, you know, before you purchase. Um, you want to find what is most valuable to you, your time, and your animals. This picture is of Oreo. She was a, a duck in a sanctuary um, that came to a sanctuary, and prior to, she was attacked by a weasel. And so she had an injury on the back of her neck, and here we're just using the Assisi loop to help promote healing. So she certainly didn't know that this was supposed to help her. 
And we look at our tools, and these are just some of the things that I'll talk about today. Ice or cryotherapy, moist heat, PEMF and TPEMF or targeted PEMF, laser, back on track products, therapeutic beds, rock tape, alpha stem, braces, you know, for maybe a torn cruciate or carpal wraps, red light therapy. I'll just touch on CBD products. That is a whole nother lecture in itself. And the Calmer Canine for Anxiety, one of the a newer product. And before you really, you know, go in and jump on any sort of tool, you want to decide what your dog needs. Are you using a certain tool for a warm up, for a cool down, perhaps, as I mentioned, pain reduction and inflammation reduction, wound healing, performance enhancement, and with regard to performance enhancement, there are um, plenty of, there's research out there looking at utilizing something like laser or the ACC loop to promote performance just by increasing blood flow and assisting with uh, circulation. Do you need it for arthritic relief or injury prevention or are there tools out there that assist with anxiety? First and foremost, I can't stress this enough, if your dog is experiencing pain, before you dive into any tool, touch in any tool, you need to determine the source of pain. A dog may be painful from something like a stubbed toe um, or a soft tissue injury, but they can also be painful from a malignancy. An osteosarcoma is an unfortunate reality in many breeds and many dogs and it's important to make sure that that pain is diagnosed prior to treating. Some of the tools are contraindicated in malignancies so crucial to pay attention to that. So definitely you want to find out why the dog is experiencing pain before you start treating. And 20% of dogs and cats experiencing experience pain across the age groups and I am a huge preacher of this you have to break the pain cycle before you can improve function so if pain is not addressed the dog is not going to get better when you have pain and inflammation you have a constant increased pain response and I use the analogy, if you've had a headache all day long and you just have that low grade headache kind of rumbling on and you walk in the door and someone slams a cabinet or slams a drawer, your reaction is inflated. It's because you have an increased response due to the pain that you're experiencing. Healthy nerve cells operate at about negative 70 millivolts and and fire at about negative 20. Compromised nerve cells have a lower threshold and so they're just going to respond a lot quicker. So something that may not seem, you know, if your dog reacts quickly to you petting him or touching his neck, they may be in a chronic state of pain and inflammation and they're overreacting. So very, very important to look at. Some of the effects of uncontrolled pain include a compromised immune function, slower healing, they may, increased pain may increase morbidity and mortality after surgery. So even if your dog has a regular spay or neuter, so important to treat pain. Uncontrolled pain can also promote tumor growth and it changes motor function over time. So chronic pain the dogs can definitely adapt. So it's one of the things we're constantly looking at. Most dogs will experience pain at some point in their life and you have to decide where the pain fits into what you need. So can you control that pain? This is an image of a, a digital thermal image demonstrating uh, the red and the little white spot are increased areas of temperature in indicating increased pain. So important to look at and again determine 
where is the dog, you know, do they have more pain in a certain area. And we want to decide what do you need or what does your dog need. So if we look at this bloodhound coming over these barrels, he's pretty active. So, you know, he's obviously able to do that kind of activity and, you know, we'll just have to adjust and maybe treat him a little bit differently. The miniature horse on the other side is 25 years old, has chronic arthritis in his knees, and we're just hoping that he could function through another winter and step over an object, you know, with his chronic, chronic knee issues. So important to look at what are your goals and what does the dog need? So when we look at the different areas, some appropriate tools for warm up. Certainly exercise, you know, just having the dog move will increase blood flow. The back on track products, which I'll talk about, will can definitely assist with warm up. Laser will help increase blood flow and circulation. The Assisi loop or the lounge will assist. Moist heat, massage, and rock tape, which I'll talk about all of these things. To cool down, you may use cryotherapy or ice, uh, PEMF, which we'll discuss, uh, this works well along with the ACC loop, laser, back on track, massage, and the two types of massage will be different from warm up to cool down. With pain reduction, there are many things that we can use and it's just gonna again depend on the type of pain. For um, cryotherapy or ice, and I'll discuss when to use ice, when to use heat, the ACC loop, the ACC lounge, laser, back on track products, the other PEMF, moist heat. And again, I'll discuss when to use moist heat versus cryotherapy. Inflammation, to um, reduce the inflammation. You know, certainly wounds are one of the things and um, that will get a lot of inflammation. One of these pictures is a post spay, just using the ACC loop to reduce that inflammation. Um, soft tissue injury is very painful and we really want to reduce that inflammation. Um, we can use cryotherapy or ice, moist heat, and um, the moist heat will come after the acute inflammatory phase. Laser, ACC loop, PEMF, or red light therapy. Again, some of the tools that you can use. For wound healing, and if you have dogs, wounds are, whether it's a traumatic wound or um, cracks in the, um, in the pads of the nails or a lick granuloma or a hot spot, we'll definitely see all types of wounds. Using things like the ACC loop, laser, targeted PEMF, or red light therapy to assist with healing. Osteoarthritis, this is the most common cause for chronic or maladaptive pain in veterinary patients. And as I mentioned, 20% of dogs and cats are going to experience some sort of pain in their lifetime. And again, breaking that pain cycle is going to be so imperative to get that dog moving on. This is an older dachshund and breaking his pain cycle was crucial so he could function and move around. When we look at osteoarthritis, there are a lot of things that we could utilize. Laser, a CC loop, PEMF, ice or heat, just depending, massage, CBD products, back on track products, maybe kinesio taping or rock taping. This, uh, Older gal, Emily, was quite a show dog in her day, and as she started to, to age, she received a, a lot of different um, treatments, both at home and in the clinic, that fit into her multimodal approach. So while we were reducing pain and inflammation, we were also working on her strength. Anxiety, so things like back on track, Alpha Stim, which I'll talk about, the um, Canine Calm by CC Animal Health, CBD products. 
And the Calmer Canine is one of the newer products out on the market, and I um, won't read this to you. It's in your notes here, but taking a look at canine separation anxiety and using a pulsed electro electromagnetic field device. And um, the preliminary results are very um, positive in assisting with anxiety. And we look at the, um, the mechanism here. The calmer canine is going to reduce anxiety in the inf inflammatory mediators, and it also assists with endorphin release. So it's something for those anxious dogs that um, may not be a candidate for all pharmace pharmaceutical interventions or a combination. I have my own dog who has a lot of anxiety issues, and so far this has been working nicely with him, reducing his anxiety um, episodes. I mentioned back on track products and back on track products, you probably can't go to a agility event, a horse event without seeing back on track products. Um, they're definitely, you know, have, have a large permeation in both canine and equine sports and they have human, um, human products as well. And these products have a technology in the fiber the textile is a synergy of ancient Chinese experience and modern scientific test textile technology. They call it a wellness technology. When worn or used, these particles radiate an energy back towards the body. And this reflection is known as long wave radiation, which is also known as long wave infrared radiation. As I mentioned, they make dog beds and blankets, also uh, hawk and carpal wraps. Um, they also have dog beds. And when you look at the, the long wave infrared radiation helps increase the blood circulation. Um, and of course, increased blood circulation is going to improve muscle performance. So when we look at warming the dog up, you know, especially to putting on the coat or one of the products to an event, um, definitely after to, to help um, improve the circulation and return um, the circulation back to the body parts that it's needed. I like their, their both their carpal wraps and their hawk wraps are very beneficial, especially after an injury. And these work very nicely also with older dogs, older dogs with arthritis, um, just to have on, you know, before a walk, during a walk, um, they do very well. And when I looked at uh, the research on back on track products, so here's some links. One is um, by back on track. It's a interesting dissertation that you could read. The link is there. And then also another one looking at horses. And as I mentioned, you can't go to an equine event without seeing back on track products everywhere. And, you know, there's getting back to animals cannot lie. So, you know, just looking at the, the benefit. Um, these products, when I did some research on them, so they, the jackets and besides being worn, they don't use their, lose their therapeutic effect. So rock tape, rock tape or kinesio tape or K-tape has been um, very popular in people. Again, if you look at some of the Olympic athletes or just um, your collegiate or professional athletes, you may see them with tape. My, one of my daughters is an avid equestrian. I'm often taping up her back before or after some of her performances. It's recently been used in animals, horses and dogs mostly. There is a private Facebook group, Canine Kinesiology Taping Practitioners, um, for more information on that. And there's, I also gave you a link to um, a course if you wanted to learn more about canine kinesiology um, and taping. And how it works, so this tape sticks onto the animal 
and definitely there's a big difference between putting on human skin and then on an animal due to the the hair or the fur but it's really looking at the sensory system so giving a lot of input into the canine sensory system if we, we just look about how our dogs enjoy being pet or touched and we could understand why the canine sensory system is so, um, you know, so in tune. And the skin is the largest organ in the body. So just having some tactile pressure on the skin or even feedback is beneficial. When we look at the awareness, we know that we definitely have awareness from our touch our vision, our sight, our um, nose, our hearing. So this is helping with more body awareness. And we think about the senses we use, touch, smell, vision, hearing, taste. Dogs are very much like humans and that they also use these senses to help them. So just that touch, that is what Kinesio Tape is um, assisting with. We also have a little bit of the um, gate control theory of pain. Many times the tape itself can shut off the pain. So instead of feeling the pain, the brain is feeling the tape. Very analogous to if your child or if you remember when you were little bumped your head and your mom or dad would say to rub the area because you're going to feel that instead of the pain. So some indications for rock tape or kinesio tape are pain, inflammation, definitely to assist with posture, facilitating movement. So, you know, if you want to just give a little bit more body awareness to an animal, that helps very well. What research is out there? If you do a PubMed search, uh, there, is, there are 189, maybe a couple more by now, studies on kinesio tape, um, 87 on kinesiology tape, only one with horses, and that was on jockeys, one with equine, and zero for dogs right now. So this is a relatively new area, um, in working on that. In reality, um, I will use it sometimes if a dog needs a little bit more body awareness. This Roddy that's on the treadmill here, we're having some issues with uh, facilitation of her left side. So I apply the tape, should do the treadmill, and then I take the, the tape off. It is difficult, especially with long hair breeds, to keep the tape on there. Um, we don't shave animals in our, our clinic. And there's a big difference between using this with a Whippet or a Greyhound versus a German Shepherd. I also don't always leave the dogs unattended with the tape in case they're going to eat it or rip it off. But the big things that I've seen are um, inflammation and body awareness. So cryotherapy or ice, I think ice, if you will, is one of the best anti-inflammatories. There's not many ways to make money off of ice. I mean, there's definitely lots of different contraptions you can use, um, but ice is definitely one of my go-to anti-inflammatory um, products. And ice will reduce pain because there's a decreased muscle spindle activity and it disrupts the pain muscle spasm cycle. There's also a vasoconstriction so it reduces the blood flow to the area and assists with that. You also have a decreased nerve conduction velocity and it inhibits production and release of inflammatory mediators. Generally, you're going to apply ice for 10 to 15 minutes and you could do this four or five, six, seven times a day. And ice packs, there's so many options out there. You can definitely buy a compression unit. Um, you know, some of the units used for people with rehab work great. 
One of my favorite things is uh, a human cervical or neck ice pack that you can buy at a drugstore or Amazon or something like that. They're very pliable and you could wrap them around dog's knees and shoulders and all of that. But in a pinch, you can use a frozen bag of peas or vegetables, commercial ice packs. You can also do ice massage. So filling a Dixie cup up with ice, letting it, or with water, let it freeze, and then massaging the area does great too. Um, as I mentioned, there are some units that you can buy that do both compression um, and cold, which will definitely facilitate the um, reducing inflammation. These are especially great with uh, post-operative cases, or as I mentioned, you can use regular ice packs. One of um, ice and compression works great. This German Shepherd it had a cervical disc injury, and that is a human whiplash collar on him. And what I had recommended to the owner is to put an ice pack around his neck and then put this on. So we get nice ice and compression. And this is one of my favorite things to do at home with dogs that have a history of um, cervical disc injuries. Moist hot packs or heating pads are another great thing. I have my smiley face here. Um, for animals, I highly recommend the type that you either heat up in a microwave or warm water. I don't like the ones that plug in, um, primarily because if the dog turned around and started chewing on the cord, there could be an issue. Um, also, the ones that are heated up in a microwave or hot water will lose heat over time. The ones plugged in, some of them um, continuously stay hot, so you have that issue of potentially burning an animal. And when we look at heat or warm compresses, you know, as I mentioned, lots of different things out here also. You can use commercial hot packs, warm towels, hot water bottles, and we'll get a superficial heating. So we're going to heat about one to two centimeters. Typically for um, heat, we want to leave on 15 to 20 minutes. And with this, we're going to get a vasodilation. We're also going to reduce muscle spasm. It's going to improve tissue el elasticity and some general relaxation. This is very helpful to do prior to stretching the dog. And once you take the hot pack off, you'll want to perform the stretching on the dog. So let's say you're working on flexibility of the dog's hip flexors. It would be a great idea to place heat on for 15 to 20 minutes and then stretch immediately after. You'll get a lot of benefits um, from the elasticity. And when we look at heat versus ice, so we want to use ice after an acute injury. So that is right when it happens up till three days. You can also use ice after activity on a chronic condition. So let's say your dog has chronic osteoarthritis. So maybe an older dog and you know he has chronic issues and he goes outside and he plays at the snow, in the snow or at the beach and inflames himself up. You'll want to use ice. Heat is beneficial before activities to loosen muscles and joints and relax the injured tissue. So heat is generally great to use in the subacute or in chronic phases. So anywhere from three to five days after the injury and then continuing on. And definitely feel the area, if an area is warm, you'll most of the time want to apply ice to it and you know use kind of uh, you know see what feels better to your dog as well I have a chronic knee injury and heat irritates it ice always feels better so definitely look at what is going to work the best for you